to Rich Kane, Shani. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from eating disorder. Hi Shani, hi. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I decided to do a horizontal video today for today's video. I did kind of want to do like an old Shani style video where I at least collect my thoughts a little bit to give you a video that's not annoying with me rambling and me saying the same thing over and over because Trust me, I'm annoyed with it too. One of you sweeties out there left a comment that was like, Shani, I love you, but like, get to the point. I get it, trust me, because when I edit my videos, I'm saying the same thing. And I'm like, why do I talk so slow? So anyway, so anyway, so today I thought I would write down 10, I'm obviously working on more things than this, but I thought I'd write down 10 personal things that I'm working on in my personal life, and I wanna hear what you're working on. And you don't have to share it if you don't want, but if you want to, you should. We should all be working on ourselves to make ourselves better. And um, I am going through hell right now. And I could, you know, I'm trying to add more gratitude to my life. And so that comes with being positive. And, and the more positive you are and recognize the things that you need to work on about yourself, the more gratitude you feel and the more positivity that you feel in all the things. See, I'm rambling again. Okay, let's just get into this list of 10 things that I am working on personally in my personal life, 10 personal things for the life my that I'm working on to better myself currently. And there are more than 10, but this is just 10 for the video's sake. Number one, being productive every day. This might sound like normal to everyone else in the world. To me, it's not. Um, I unfortunately am plagued with a lot of physical illnesses and a lot of mental illnesses that have kept me from I always thought, I, I realize now that I have worth, but um, for a long time I just thought, you know, I have no use to society, I don't contribute anything, and da da da. But um, ever since the situation happened that we're in right now, um, I kind of had no choice but to be productive every day and to kind of take over the stress of finding us a new home to live and you know, um, all of that stuff and, and doing all of that and everything that comes with that, calling people and talking to people and getting past my anxieties in order to do those things and going out and looking for houses and, and really just trying to take the stress away from Danny so that he can focus on his work and I can take care of this situation even though it's like the most stressful situation I've ever been through. Um, being productive every day is something that started to make me feel really good at first because I didn't have a choice at first. And then I woke up one day and I was like, oh, there's nothing I can do today. I can't go see a house today. Um, these people aren't getting back to me. I, I, there's nothing I can do until Monday or whatever. I don't know which day it was, but but I was like, but I'm not gonna stay in bed today. I'm gonna not stay in bed and rest and watch a movie and probably take a nap. No, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna do something productive every day. And I've been sticking to that. Even on the days where I feel like absolute shit, I've been sticking to that and it's felt good. Number two, eating disorder alternatives. So this is something I'm consciously working on all the time, um, but especially right now. And I can tell you honestly, it is not going well. Um, I'm not doing well with my eating disorder at all right now. I am very, um, it's like I get in this like, what, what do they call that? Like a, wait, fight or flight? Wait, but what does that mean? That, I don't think that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know, I just get in this, like I'm used to doing behaviors when I'm stressed or when I'm going through something really hard and I'm trying, I'm genuinely trying and I'm proud of myself for that to try and do other things instead. Um, but I'm not succeeding at it right now. Uh, things are just that hard that, I don't even, oh, I'm trying. I really am trying. Number three, answering phone calls and text messages and some social media messaging too. I've been working on this. I've got a huge fear of the telephone. I don't like it when someone calls me or texts me or comes to my house or tries to communicate with me in any way. I really hate that. Why, why are people trying to communicate with me? Again, this came on because I had to do these things, stuff that we're going through. I had no choice but to be, but to answer phone calls, answer text messages. I've been answering phone calls every day, no matter what number it comes from, even if it says unknown or if it says 
even like the spam risk numbers I've been answering just because I'm like what if that what if it's that one owner dude that we really want that house that I'm that we need to get in good with him first so that he'll pick us over the other candidates like you know what I mean like it's like all of that anxiety had to go out the window for a few days and then I realized wait I can do this and so then I started really working more on answering text messages and phone calls when like my family calls or texts me um, and I'm not perfect at this. If my family is watching, I'm working on it. But for the most part, you got to give me credit. Before, it would have taken me like a month to get a hold of me. <laughs> my family jokes about it all the time. My brother actually made a joke in my birthday video years ago on YouTube, where in our family we go around the table and say what we're, what we love about the birthday person. My brother said something like. She's so easy to love, but she's so hard to get a hold of. And that's like accurate to the T. Of all mine that I knew she was shattered from heaven. Because seriously, because I knew when I was a little girl. And I came from hell. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> so she was safe, the best for last, and she, not the best. Sorry, all my kids are the best. <laughs> you can say she's the best. Sorry, Mike. She's <laughs> the best last child, but seriously, I love her because she's so easy to love. Easy to love, hard to get a hold of. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> and my family makes fun of me for it. Everyone does and it's fine. I laugh at it too. Number four, talking faster in videos and getting to the point in my videos because it's really annoying that I say things and then I pause too much and then I talk really slow. People probably watch me in 1.5 feet speed. I'm guessing you do. If you do, no shame, I won't be offended. You can tell me in the comments because when I'm editing, I'm like, oh my gosh, how do I speed this up even while I'm editing because I talk so freaking slow and then I just ramble on and on on and on and on and I say the same thing over and over and over just in different kind of ways but basically it's the same thing but it's like while I'm editing I feel like I have to leave all of that in because I'm like what if someone doesn't get my point and I'm really defensive and I'm really like afraid of hurting people's feelings sometimes or, or saying something stupid and being stupid and so I just just say things over and over until they feel right in my head until the way that I say that comes out right and like why can't I just edit out all the other ones before that then and only put in the one that feels right because I've already edited all of those ones and so to go back into iMovie it's very complicated to go back and remove those because then you'd have to change the music and you'd have to cut the music and it gets really confusing and my iPad is getting old and it's already glitching a lot with iMovie and so I don't do that. but I'm working on it. Number five, sex. That one is self-explanatory. You guys know I'm an open book about this stuff and I'm trying to be an open vagina lately, but it's really hard. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> Number six, being more gentle on myself. I really am working on this, even though I'm sitting here insulting myself this entire video. I really am working on this and I'm getting better at it. And I'm also working on accepting apology, or not apology, sorry, compliments from people. I'm being more gentle with myself and trying to be more just accepting of love and giving and um, humbling myself and putting my pride aside and accepting help from people and just trying to be grateful and okay. Number seven, saving money and building our credit. I've already talked about this recently. This whole situation, as shitty as it is, it is teaching me a lot of lessons and one of them is that we are not good with money. Um, and we never have been and we've always known that and it's always been this thing that's like, well, we're never gonna have kids so it's not like we need to be saving up, you know, to send them to college or to, pay for their weddings or whatever like I don't know I don't I don't know if that's the only reason or I don't know what it is or if it's that my whole life I've I've you know dealt with suicide ideation and um thought that that's how I would die and so sometimes when you have those thoughts every day you're like I, who cares if we spend this money even if we should save it let's just spend it we have it so let's spend it because who knows how long I'm gonna be here I know that's really dark sorry that's really dark but again, that's something I'm working on, which means that I'm looking at a future and that's good. Like the situation 
freaking sucks and I'm sick of it. But man, it's making me grow up and deal with all of these fun situations that are great, that are doing that I need to do better. Number eight, cooking more. I've been cooking more lately. It saves money. When I cook, I cook like, I don't know, three or four days worth and we just have leftovers for a few days. It's way cheaper before this, before all this happened, we would go out almost every night. We would get takeout and I would cook like maybe once a week and now I'm cooking like twice a week, maybe three times depending on how much I make when I cook. And that's been helping. And it's also been better for Danny cause he gets, you know, nicer home cooked meals, which I love to do for him. I worry constantly about his health. And so it does make me feel better to make him homemade meals cause I know what's in them and I know that I don't know, I just can make something that's hearty for him that he'll enjoy, and I love that. I love when people enjoy food that I make. It's very, I don't know, I just like that. Okay, number nine and number 10 kind of go together. Number nine and 10, church, faith, and prayer. So I've been working on getting back to church. Um, today was Sunday for me, and I did not go today. Danny had to work today. He had to work last week as well. And last week I didn't feel comfortable going without him. And today I was too sick to even get out of bed. It was a bad day. I don't want to talk about it. But anyway, um, but before that, before t today and last week, we've been going to church and we've been um, going and participating in, in the, the sacrament portion of our church, which is, um, how do you explain? I feel like I've explained this, but where you take the bread and water and it represents the blood of Christ and the body of Christ. And it's kind of our equivalent in our church of like going to confession, kind of, sort of, like kind of asking forgiveness for the things that you've done through the, throughout the week and asking for blessings for the, for, for the upcoming week. And also just thinking about the body of Christ and the blood of Christ and what that means and what he did for us and how he died for us and all of that. So, um, and a lot of blessings have always come to my life when I take the sacrament. So, even though we have not yet stayed for the entire church yet, um, we at least started going to sacrament meeting and taking sacrament and it feels really good to do that. So that's something I've been working on. Then also faith and prayer is um, huge. I never, hardly ever prayed for myself before and now I'm praying every single day and we're praying Danny and I together, which is something we haven't done in over a decade together. And we're also just, practicing faith and it's taking a lot of God is giving me a lot of opportunities to practice faith so thank you for all of these beautiful not stressful opportunities to practice faith he's really great <laughs> but he really is and I can say confidently that the only thing in my life that has always been a constant is God and Christ and my faith and what I believe. The only thing that's ever been a constant since the day I was born that I can remember. So every time I do go back to it and every time I partake in it, I feel better. And this isn't me pushing it on you. You guys know I respect all beliefs and if you don't believe in God, that's totally fine. Like I put like whatever, you believe in that's great for you this is just what i believe and what i feel is right for me so it helps a lot and i don't think i would have been able to work on any of the other parts of this list without god's help so thanks bro love you okay i'm gonna end it here 17 minutes i feel like that's a little better considering how much i talked about come on did i do better today no one's gonna watch it is it 17 minutes <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow for something. I love you so much. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful, you are worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching. Bye. Oh, I started high on that one. Okay, bye.